Tonight on Intimate Portrait. Vanna White is known for turning letters. In fact, she's turned letters into a lucrative career. For over 16 years, she's appeared on our televisions wearing glamorous gowns and a sincere smile. She's seen and loved by millions of viewers, but what do we really know about this person that graces our homes each night? Vanna's very open and very relaxed. She doesn't take any of it very seriously, you know? It's a job to her. As a teenager, Vanna plotted her course to stardom. But along the way, she watched while her mother died from cancer at a very young age, and then the love of her life was killed in a freak plane crash. Vanna struggled to make it in Hollywood, but she almost lost her big chance. Her audition for the Wheel of Fortune was far from letter perfect. I probably would not have chosen Vanna, not that she wasn't charming and beautiful and all those things she still is, but she was petrified. But she won the job, and today she's regarded as America's sweetheart by her legions of fans. I think with Fanta, it's that personality that's there, that realness, that sweetness that's there. Vanna's current role as wife and mother is the one she cherishes the most. I'm Merv Griffin, and this is an intimate portrait of my good friend Vanna White. Game show Mona Lisa. Anna Marie Rosich was born on February 18, 1957, her father's 27th birthday. Her mother Joan was 21 and a devoted, doting new mom. In fact, Vanna's future dreams were shaped by her mother's strong personality. Joan Nicholas grew up in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It was a small town, but Joan had big plans for herself. My mother was so outgoing. She was personable with everyone. She loved everyone. She had a good time in life. She enjoyed life to the fullest. Joan grew up here, and everybody knew her. Everybody loved her. If you could say you had a hometown or a sweetheart, it would have been Joan. The common goal of making it in Hollywood, a goal she would pass on to Vanna. And he and Joan used to sit around and dream about when they were going to be movie stars. And, of course, Christopher George went on to California and, and became a star. And Joan kept this, even though she married young, she still would like to have fulfilled those dreams. Joan married artist Mike Rusich when she was just 20 years old. A year later, Vanna was born. One year after that, they divorced. Mike moved to New York City, and Joan and Vanna stayed in North Myrtle Beach. So I was raised by my mother and grandparents for the first couple of years. And then a man named Herbert White came into my mother's life, and he and my mother got married, and he adopted me when I was three. Well, I guess it was uh, the blonde hair, the sweet smile and the fact that she seemed to take to me. And that was a big thing, a precious child. And of course, I fell in love with her as a two-year-old. And uh, Joan at the same time, so it was a sort of double thing. Three years later in 1961, baby brother Chip was born. The Whites enjoyed a close, knit, idyllic life while the children were growing up. I would say we had as normal, loving families as you could wish for anyway. We spent all holidays together, and if it was Easter, we had the big Easter hunt and things of that nature. Growing up, my childhood was wonderful. It was happy. We just had such a good time. My brother and I were so close. We did everything together. We played cowboys and Indians. We played doctor. We 
you know, went to the beach. We had tree houses. We did the normal things that kids do. Both Vanna and Chip knew that their mom was slightly more outgoing than most. She was really a hip mom. She wore bell bottoms and bright jumpsuits, very 60s hip clothes. She loved Tom Jones and Engelbert Humperdinck. In this small town, supportive, loving atmosphere, Vanna learned that she could do or be anything she wanted to in life. And thanks to her mom's encouragement, she knew at a very young age what that was going to be. I must have been about 10 years old. I'll never forget laying on the sofa. I had just had my appendix out, so I was literally laying down. I couldn't move. And seeing this show called Rat Patrol on TV. Christopher George, the childhood friend of her mother, was the star of that show. He had made it to the big time, and that inspired Vanna. From that moment that I saw him, I wanted to be on TV. Vanna would hold on to that dream throughout her teenage years. Nothing else was in my mind. I want to be a model. I want to be a movie star. I want to do something in Hollywood. And that never left me from the time I was 10. Of course, I went through high school. I, I, I was a good student. I was mostly straight A's. I did have some B's. And one time, I did have a C. That was not pretty. When Vanna was 12, her mother told her about her real father, Mike Rosich. Up until that point, Vanna had thought Herb was her biological father. But the Whites thought it was time she knew the truth. Joan took Vanna to New York City to meet Mike Rosich face to face. I'll never forget walking into the apartment that my father was in and seeing him for the first time. I felt that I'm looking at this man who I think I kind of resembled a little bit. I could see um, a little resemblance. And I'm thinking, this is my real father. It was, it was like, you're my real father, but you're such a stranger. I'm 12 years old. I've never met you. I know this other man that I love and adore. And he's my father. It was a little confusing for me, but I tried to understand it. Well, I think the good part about it, excuse me, uh, is the fact that she got to meet her father and not wonder about him the rest of her life. And that was my thought. Don't wonder why he deserted you or why this. So it all worked out real well. Throughout her high school years, Vanna kept her sights on a career in front of the camera, much as her mother had dreamed when she was a young girl. Vanna began trying out for pageants, including the annual North Myrtle Beach Sun Fun Festival. And though she was never crowned Miss Sun Fun, she considers the experience invaluable. It was a turning point because I was in the, in the Miss Sun Fun pageant. Uh, it was almost the step that you go to when you start to grow up. You know, you, you try to look good, you put makeup on, you wear a pretty dress. And I'll always remember that time in my life, the transition. We were behind her no matter what she wanted, you know. I mean, uh, anything that she said, if she said she was going to uh, be a Hollywood star, would say, yes, you are. <laughs> Vanna blossomed into quite a vivacious young woman. She was a cheerleader in high school and sought after by a lot of the boys. But when it came to dating, I was quite shy. I really was. I liked boys, and I wanted to go out with boys, but when they asked me out, I was, I don't know, I just became shy. All through her teenage years, Vanna worked on her dream to somehow become a star. She made herself up to look glamorous and had a friend take some pictures. After graduation, Vanna decided not to go to college, but to attend a fashion and modeling school in Atlanta, Georgia. I really wanted to move directly to Hollywood, California, but my parents thought, well, that's really a long way to go, just in case you don't want to do the show business thing. Vanna had total support from her mom, who also heard the call of Hollywood. She was thrilled when Vanna went to modeling school because she knew that that was going to lead on into something else in the entertainment profession, and this is, uh, 
what Joan had always wanted, so she was beginning to realize her dreams through Vanna. Vanna moved to Atlanta and was away from home for the first time. Oh, my goodness, it was so hard when I had to leave my parents. And, of course, my mother was hysterical in tears. I can't leave you. I'm sure every mother goes through that, and father, when they have to leave their child at school. So that was the beginning of my adult life. Next, Vanna leaves home to be a model and has her first adult romance. He was good for me. I learned a lot from him. And we had a great time together. Vanna White will return on Intimate Portrait. This Intimate Portrait is sponsored by Plymouth. More fun, more car, that's Plymouth. It has arrived. The all-new 1999 Chrysler LHS. Timeless design, luxurious appointments, and power inside and out. On one hand, it's exceptionally quiet. On the other hand, it screams luxury. The 1999 Chrysler LHS. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Lease the all-new Chrysler LHS for just $3.99 a month. I have an announcement to make. I don't just color my hair. I revitalize it with new excellence cream from L'Oreal, the non-drip color cream. Of course, it protects, always has, but new excellence is even better with a ceramide and protein formula to revitalize your hair for rich color, incredible body, more oomph. And does it ever cover grays? Not that I ever had any. New excellence cream from L'Oreal. Because I'm scratchy, achy, mean. When a sore throat plays rough, give the kid a bear. A new Get Better Bear Sore Throat Pop. It soothes the throat. It's the bear that makes it better. New Get Better Bears from Dimatap. These days, everyone's trying to catch Nintendo's Pokemon. So catch a Pokemon beanbag for only $4.99 with any KFC meal. Catch all four. Better hurry up. I'm starting my own collection. This is my mom. Holidays were her specialty. She always knew to make Chex Party Mix, the good stuff, all seasoned and toasted. It was perfect, just like my mom. Working hard or working hard, Centrum has your nutrition covered. With Centrum, you benefit from what science is discovering about how vitamins and minerals help maintain health and strengthen immunity. Centrum, always complete from A to Zinc. I'm Merv Griffin, and we now return to an intimate portrait of Vanna White. In 1976, at the age of 18, Vanna was on her own. She attended the Atlanta School of Fashion and Design and went on auditions for modeling jobs. She landed her first assignment after only six weeks. The first job I remember doing was a local commercial, local television commercial, uh, for a car. I don't remember which car it was, but I do remember driving the car. And uh, I was very proud. You know, I did something, and that stemmed into other things. Um, I did a lot of conventions, where you go to the conventions and you work in a booth, and, you know, you wear short shorts and tight shirts and hand out pamphlets and smile. Did a lot of that kind of thing. On Halloween night, 1976, Vanna met Gordy Watson. He was a luxury car salesman, 14 years her senior, and he stole Vanna's heart. What attracted me to this man was he was beautiful, he was gorgeous, he was mature. I just fell in love. It's like. This is a perfect man, my goodness. And he likes me? Ooh, I like this. But after four years in Atlanta, Vanna's career had still not taken off, and neither had her relationship with Gordy. And Vanna still had dreams of going to California. I had my relationship with Gordy, and the modeling was going OK. I probably wasn't pursuing it as much as I should, because I was so involved with him. And then things just started sliding, and I don't know, it just didn't work out. So I said, now's the time to go to Hollywood. 
And then there was a period of time, I guess, when she realized she wasn't going to be a professional model, because I guess she wasn't tall enough or, you know, whatever reason. And um, she just decided to just bite the bullet, and she got in her car and drove to L.A. one day. On January 2nd, 1980, with youthful optimism, Vanna, age 22, and her friend Belinda forged west seeking fame and fortune. When my girlfriend and I decided to move to California, she had never driven a stick shift. So we get in this 20-foot U-Haul truck. So she's driving, and I'm shifting gears, telling her to push in the clutch. So I'm shifting the gears as she's driving. She learned quick. When Vanna arrived in Los Angeles, she found that even small modeling jobs were almost impossible to come by. I would go on at least 100 interviews before I got a job. Every day, pounding the pavement, walking into a room with 25 of the most gorgeous girls you've ever seen. You feel about this tall? Oh, it was awful. I was so depressed. It was just terrible. As a matter of fact, I gained 25 pounds. That's how depressed I was. Vanna lost the weight. But a few months later, she received a call from her father that would bring her back to North Myrtle Beach. Vanna's mother, Joan, had cancer and was going downhill quickly. Up to that point, Joan had insisted that no one tell Vanna about her illness. Joan made all of us promise that we would not uh, include Vanna. Uh, because she just didn't want to interfere with what was going on in Vanna's life at that time. So she waited, and finally, uh, you just couldn't wait any longer, so Vanna was told. So I immediately went home after my father said that. I would say within a few days, I was back home. My career didn't matter at that point. The most important thing was my mother. Vanna was always there. She'd... The sicker she got, she'd help her to the bathroom, she'd wash her, she was, she was there. When Joan was finally hospitalized and close to the end, she asked Peggy Hersey to take care of Vanna. Joan reached over and took Vanna's hand and reached over and got my hand with her other hand, and she put them together. And she says, I want you to take care of my little girl. I want you to... Look, watch over her, just like a mother, just like I would. So that's how Vanna and I became so close. Vanna was with her mother until she died. Joan Nicholas White was 44 years old. It made me so strong. And I, I think she lives through me because she wanted to be where I am, you know? I, I know that she, she loved the limelight. She loved being herself and being open and being with people and being on. She loved that. She had a great personality, and I think that, that she is living through me. When Vanna returned to Los Angeles, she was even more determined to make it. She got a couple of small roles in films, playing a cheerleader in Graduation Day and a high school student in the horror film Midnight Offerings. It was during this period, in December of 1981, that Vanna met and began dating John Gibson. Gibson was working as a male exotic dancer. When I first met John, it was a physical attraction. He was so beautiful, blonde and tanned and, and nice. He was a nice man. Um, and that, that really attracted me to him, too. Um, and he was a struggling actor. He was doing things here and there. And then he became a regular on The Young and the Restless. Vanna and John fell in love and moved in together. The two were well suited to each other and committed to a future as man and wife. Oh, I definitely thought we would get married. I, I thought he was the one. We had a great life together. We loved each other. We were compatible. Everything was just wonderful. In September of 1982, Vanna and John had a chance meeting with the producers of Wheel of Fortune. Vanna knew that they were looking for a new letter turner, and she boldly went up to the producers and asked for the job. Would I ever have another chance to do that again? I had to, hey, I'm here. Look at me, here I am. This is the only time I'm sure I'll ever meet you, so now's my chance. My producers told Vanna to call them in a month. 
She did, and she was granted an audition and interview with the host, Pat Sajak. We auditioned five or six young women on camera with me. They wanted to see how we interacted and all that, and they were all very attractive women. And I must tell you, frankly, that if the choice were mine, should I tell you this? Yeah, what the heck. I probably would not have chosen Vanna. Not that she wasn't charming and beautiful and all those things, she still is, but she was petrified. And I was. My knees were shaking. I couldn't move my mouth. My lips were quivering so much. I was so nervous. I wanted this job more than anything. I was, I was desperate. I wanted it. And afterwards, I said, this, she's, she's beautiful. I wish she could do the show, but I don't think she can speak well. Um, but Merv Griffin, bless his heart, managed to see through that. And he said, trust me, she's got a great look. She's a nice person. People will like her. And she's a little nervous. That stuff will disappear. And it did. So Merv is obviously a much smarter man than I am. But I think we knew that going into this. Next, just as Vanna was making it big, her world came crashing down, and she suffered a devastating loss. I fell to my knees. I, I just lost control of everything. I knew what had happened. Vanna White will return on Intimate Portrait. On Lifetime, Tracy loves mom. Now, can she learn to like her? I think we're really on our way to a better relationship. Get out. Then, when Maggie saves the day, Art's ego takes a dive. You're insane. That's Oh Baby and Maggie, tonight on Lifetime. Come next door for Christmas. Spend an hour with Lifetime's Katie Brown. She's going primetime to help you make this Christmas extra special. It's a very Katie Christmas special. Premieres Wednesday, December 9th at 7 on Lifetime, television for women. What a beautiful frame, Scott. Actually, it's a picture of me. Thank you so much. I needed a frame like this. It's a picture of me. Now, exactly what are you going to put in this? But it's a picture of me. These are the elegant gifts for the home that you love to give and to get. You'll find them all at great low prices this holiday season at Target. But it's a picture of me. There is no limit to where it can take you. A leather trimmed and preferred suede interior, heated front seats, and dual zone temperature control. Winner of the Total Quality Award for Best Ownership Experience. The most luxurious minivan you can buy. Chrysler Town & Country. We call it limited. You'll call it unlimited. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Now get a thousand cash allowance on Chrysler Town & Country. Who's giving everybody the giggles? It's Tickle Me Elmo. When your child tickles him, he talks, <laughs> laughs, and his whole body shakes. There's Toss and Tickle Me Elmo, too. Tickle Me Elmo and Toss and Tickle Me Elmo from Sesame Street. This is my mom. Holidays were her specialty. She always knew to make Chex Party Mix, the good stuff, all seasoned and toasted. It was perfect, just like my mom. Mix Velveeta and Hormel chili together. It's delicious. It's In her own words, intimate portrait, Reba McIntyre. Next Saturday night at 10. Hey, nice jacket you just bought. Unfortunately, it costs less downtown. And if you're not sure about that china, it is returnable, if you can find the receipt. Shopping's filled with pleasures and pitfalls, but you can enjoy extra security, plus a low 4.9% interest rate on purchases with the Optima Platinum Card from American Express. Call 1-800-OPTIMA-6 to apply. There's no annual fee. With the Optima Platinum Card, you'll always get the best price. And if the store doesn't take something back, we will. You'll also enjoy a long list of Optima Platinum Card privileges and, of course, American Express service. Call 1-800-OPTIMA-6. You'll enjoy a low 4.9% introductory rate, plus exceptional purchasing power and no annual fee. Ever. For the things you buy, 
and the things that can happen to them. The Optima Platinum Card helps you do more. I'm Merv Griffin, and we now return to an intimate portrait of Vanna White. On November 24th, 1982, at the age of 25, Vanna White got the phone call that changed her life forever. Do we know how to pick a hostess, I ask you, lady? She was to be the new letter-turner on the Wheel of Fortune. You. I am very excited and happy to be part of Wheel of Fortune. That's right, and this is a family you will soon grow to know and love. Uh, well, you know, uh, the wheel wasn't that popular then, and I didn't know much about it, but she told me uh, what she'd be making per show, and I said, well, you know, that's not bad. At least you'll be paying your rent and, and have a little money. It's good to have you here, and you're going to be over at the letter board, and we'll be talking at the end of the show, and as the days and weeks and years NBC Willing goes on, okay? All right. All right. Vanna Thank White, you. ladies and gentlemen. You. I think the act of selecting Vanna, which was a stroke of brilliance on Murr's part, was probably one of those experiences that uh, is akin to looking for anything that's important that you know it's right when you see it. And you say, that's the one. 300. Right. May I have a tea, please? Sure. Off to a All right. good start. There's the tea. Hey, I'd like to spin. All right. We all witnessed a moment of history right, as Vanna turned her first letter as permanent proposal. Vanna's initial nervousness soon went away and she became the biggest cheerleader contestants could ever hope for. My favorite show is when all three contestants win something because they go through a lot to get to where they are. Over the next four years, the Wheel of Fortune became a runaway hit and Vanna's career took off right along with it. And she was still on cloud nine in her relationship with boyfriend John Gibson. On May 17th, 1986, John, a fledgling pilot, rented a small plane and flew to the mountains near Los Angeles. He was supposed to be back in the evening to attend a wedding with Vanna. While she was home preparing for the party, she heard a news flash on television. A small plane crashes near Van Nuys Airport. Investigators are on the scene. One man, the pilot, was killed. I was taking a bath. I had the TV on and it said, uh, man killed in plane crash. Details at six. And for some reason, I knew it was him. I don't know what it was, but I, chills went through my body, and I just... I continued getting ready, but not knowing what, what, what to do. I, I, there's nothing I could do. Vanna's fears proved to be true. John Gibson's plane had been flipped over by wind turbulence from a military aircraft. Vanna, age 29, had lost the love of her life. And I have to tell you, of all of that, the hardest part was telling his parents. So hard. It was his only child. He was their only child. He was killed in the plane crash. I would look at the door every day and wait for him to walk through, knowing that he's not coming, but there was still some kind of a hope or something inside. I guess it's a natural instinct. It's a way that we protect ourselves uh, from totally losing it. Um, but I just, I was, I was strong. I had to do what I had to do. But of course, on the inside, I'm, I was totally destroyed. But you must continue on. There's reasons for everything, whatever they may be. How's everybody doing? Vanna learned some of her most important life lessons from that experience. Oh, my. To enjoy every day, live life to the fullest, because you never know what tomorrow brings. Always appreciate the person you're with, love the person you're with, enjoy the person you're with, because they might not be there tomorrow. Her personal tragedy attracted a lot of attention from the press, who began focusing more and more on Vanna. There were even completely false rumors linking her romantically with Pat Sajak, prompting a funny skit at the beginning of one of the shows. No, not, but we've been together for... 15 years. And we've shared a lot of... Laughs. And a lot of... Memories. But like a married couple? Nah. nah. <laughs> Through all the media interest, Pat Sajak remained a strong ally. They have a great sense of humor together. And he's, he's been there a lot for her through the bad. And he's 
because he is very, you know what, the hell with him, man. It's, it's the, you know, it's tabloids. It's this. Just don't react to it, and they can't hurt you. It is scary when somebody writes something that's not true. It, it's hard to ha you, because you can't defend yourself. There's nothing you can do. In the beginning, I, I remember it hurting my feelings. How can they write this? How can they say that? It's not true. But as time goes on, you just know that it will be someone else next week. Though she tried to avoid the attention, a sort of vanamania started to emerge on its own. And in 1986, she was also featured on the cover of many established mainstream magazines, including People. Playboy named Vanna one of its sexiest stars of that year. And then in a subsequent issue, the magazine published some photos of Vanna posing in sexy lingerie. They were taken in 1981. And because of her success on Wheel of Fortune, the photographer sold the pictures to Playboy. Vanna sold magazines. She was disappointed that some, some of the photos were personal and the photographer sold them. Some of them were, were lingerie ads that she had done, you know, years ago. Everybody does them. I mean, everybody. Vanna sailed through all of the publicity with her usual grace and charm. It was a new experience for her and one that she handled well. She didn't dwell on it. She didn't argue. She didn't go, you know, in front of anybody and discuss it. She just moved forward in a real positive direction, being who she is and it just kind of took care of itself. By the end of 1986, the Wheel of Fortune began to enjoy its biggest audiences ever. Vanna had become a bona fide star, but the celebrity factor didn't go to her head. And I shudder to think, what a lot of other young women, how their heads might have been turned by what's happened to them. Vanna has a great sense of humor about it. I mean, she knows this is a lightning in the bottle sort of thing, and a, in a way, a freaky, fluky kind of success. And she accepts that and has, I mean, she doesn't go around saying, yes, I want to direct one day. She goes, you know, I, I touch letters for a living. I don't think of it as being up on some echelon. It's, it's job. Everybody, everybody has jobs, and I just happen to have this job on TV where people see me. But that doesn't change who I, who I am. I, and I play myself on TV. I'm not playing a character. I am who I am. Vanna did step into character to star in the television movie entitled The Goddess of Love. She played the title character Venus, and the plot centered around her misadventures in modern-day Los Angeles. It was her first starring role, and while it didn't garner great reviews, it did enjoy high ratings. As my life goes, um, I've gone through a lot, many ups and downs, good times, bad times, sad times, happy times, but I wouldn't change a thing. It's been, it's been great. Next, Fanna takes on the most challenging role of her life, motherhood. Fanna White will return on Intimate Portrait. You're watching Lifetime, television for women. I think it's important to diversify, so I talked to a financial advisor. I learned that there was more opportunity in bond funds than I ever realized. Oppenheimer Funds. The active little boys. I know his appearance is very important to him. He keeps those shirts of his spotless. I don't want them to end up dingy when they get thrown in the wash with the kids' dirty stuff. Liquid Tide's new clean rinse formula. It helps prevent dirt in the wash water from redepositing on clothes, so everything comes out whiter than with regular detergents. I think they're going to learn a lot from me. You never met my big Italian family, but they love you already. So tonight, they'll share with you a fresh salad this big. Then pass around the baby pictures. They'll share baskets of soft garlic breadsticks. Then pass around the baby. What they have, you can have. 
And that's how the Olive Garden feels. They call it Hospitaliano, which means everything of ours is yours. That's my cousin. She wants to share your dessert. The Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. The amazing Wizard Rotary Tool. Does detail work. Sharpen tools. The Wizard has 25% more torque. Soon your TV will have over 500 channels. Almost enough to show you everything the Wizard can do. The Wizard, built by Black & Decker. Welcome to the wonderful world of activewear. That's stuff you wear when you're, you know, active. Like this, from Jerseys. With the big, comfortable cut, and the kind of construction that lets you wash, wear, and, well, wiggle around as much as you like. Jersey style. Without worrying about a thing. So, wiggle on, won't you? In jerseys. That's, uh, with a Z. I've always been self-employed. So, it bugged me that I didn't have a retirement plan. My financial advisor helped me put one together with Oppenheimer Funds. Oppenheimer Funds. The right way to invest. I'm Merv Griffin, and this is an intimate portrait of Vanna White. Vanna White! Wheel of Fortune! In 1986, the same year she lost her boyfriend, John Gibson, 40 million viewers tuned in to see the 29 year old Vanna White turn letters on the Wheel of Fortune. The woman who turned letters for a living had captured the hearts of the American public. No one can quite figure out why it happened, but it did. I mean, on top of the fact she's beautiful and she's got a wonderful body, and but I just think somehow the magic of who, who she is just in her goodness is what really captured people. I mean, she, she turns letters. She doesn't even turn them anymore. She, you know, she touches them. Soon she'll just look at the letters and they'll light up. And yet people love her. Uh, and, and it's a real tribute to her that the warmth that she has and the nice person she is somehow manages to come across. During the first year after John Gibson's death, Vanna kept her routine down to work, writing her book, Vanna Speaks, and indulging in her favorite hobby, crochet. She was basically a homebody. Her co-workers encouraged her to get back into the dating scene, and Vanna finally took their advice. My hairdresser said, Vanna, you have to start going out. Come on, honey, you got to get out it's time and I thought to myself I said there's only one guy that I could think of going out with and I wasn't even interested in going out but I thought I've got to do it I've got to start socializing I said and that that man's name is George Santo Pietro but I think he has a girlfriend so he's out of the question George was a restaurateur and he and Vanna had been introduced several years before and he said, I would like you to meet Vanna. And I looked at her, and I immediately knew this was the woman I was going to be with. And I turned to him, and I said after she had left, that that's my Vanna. I just want you to know that. The two met up again in 1987. I went out one night to a club, and I just had a feeling she would be there. I don't know why. And I walked in, and she was on the dance floor with a girlfriend. And I simply asked her, did you come here alone? She said, no, I didn't. I said, who did you come with? She said, my brother. I said, would you mind calling him over? And she did, and I asked him if he'd driven the car, and he said, yes. I said, please drive it home, because I'm taking your sister with me. And she was somewhat stunned, and we've been together ever since. Vanna and George were together for three years before he popped the question. I never thought that George Santo Pietro would marry me. George was not the marrying kind, if you know what I mean. I mean, he, he had the reputation of, of being this, you know, bachelor. And I just never thought it would happen. But I enjoyed his company. I loved him. I loved being with him. We had such a great time together and got along so well. He was, he was great. I don't even know how we got married, except I think Vanna was at a point in her life where children were going to be in her future. And I either had to step up to the plate and, and share that with her or not. And I just couldn't imagine her doing that with anyone else. I was stunned when he asked me on Christmas Eve in 1990 to marry him in Aspen. He just turned to me and said, I'm going to ask you 
a question, and I'm only going to ask you once. Will you marry me? I said, yes. <laughs> and the whole restaurant was celebrating with champagne. <laughs> and a week later, we were married on New Year's Eve in Aspen at the Aspen Chapel. All the details for the last minute affair were arranged by George Hamilton, who also served as the best man. I said, just let me do it. And, and George and I ran off to preachers and, and, and started talking, and we, we figured out, and I got a carriage for them, and, and it's in the middle of the snow and everything else. And, uh, and it was kind of a circus, because everyone was trying to search down to find out if they were going to do it. It wasn't nothing elaborate, but it was done very, very quickly, and I think very simply, and with the friends that they cared about. Vanna's life after marriage continued as before, appearing on the Wheel of Fortune and dazzling the audiences with her gorgeous clothes and glamorous style. She developed her own line of shoes and became the spokesperson for spring air mattresses. I will not endorse anything that I don't believe in, use, or sleep on. But throughout the years, spring air has created this wonderful charity called the Vanna White Bed Bank. So over the past several years, we have donated mattresses to homeless shelters around the country. We've been to 35 cities and more donating mattresses to these wonderful people. So we've given away over a half a million dollars worth of bedding. Despite all the happiness in her life, when it was time for George and Vanna to start a family, it was difficult for her to get pregnant. It took me three years. Oh, it was, I went through everything that so many women are going through. I want to have a baby. That was my thing. As strong as I am, it was like, I have to have a baby. Why can't I have a baby? Why can't I get pregnant? And my, my husband did not want to do in vitro and all the, the drugs and everything. So we, we went the natural way. I went to a holistic doctor. He got me all strong inside and, and I took herbs and did, did acupuncture. And six weeks later, I was pregnant. And the whole world watched Vanna grow into motherhood. E is coming up, three of them. Yes, ma'am. I know more about pregnancy clothes than I ever thought I would in my life. But we were very fortunate to, to make the connection with several uh, maternity designers that were just a joy to work with. Nicholas was born in 1994, and three years later, Vanna had a baby girl named Giovanna, a combination of her name and her husband's. Tavanna having a marriage and family was a major milestone in her life. I've been on television. I've achieved that. I'm in love. I have a great husband. I have a wonderful family. I love my two kids. I love being a mom. This is where I am right now. I'm sure my life will go elsewhere after my children are grown, but right now there's there's not anything missing. Whoa. Next, Vanna develops a new interest and a new talent. Vanna White will return on Intimate Portrait. I'm Victoria Principal. You're watching Lifetime, television for women. It is grounded in the belief that for ideas to take flight, they must have wings. The new Chrysler Concord LXI with an advanced 225 horsepower engine that's incredibly powerful, yet fuel efficient. Concord, ranked best premium midsize and initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Chrysler Concord, built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. A cold medicine can't work if your child won't take it. And they're off. Timmy takes the lead. Down the banister. He bolts for the door. But Mom waves the Dymatap elixir. Great. Dymatap, the number one choice of pediatricians. Even the taste is a relief. Overactive bladder. That strong, sudden urge. Having to go so often. The fear of wedding accidents. If you're one of the millions who live with some of these symptoms, there's something you should know. Overactive bladder isn't normal at any age, and your doctor has treatments that can help. Need a break? I can wait. These treatments can help reduce the symptoms of an overactive bladder. You want to go back? In a while. Overactive bladder isn't normal at any age, so talk to your doctor today about treatments that can help. 
The amazing Wizard Rotary Tool. Does detail work. Sharpen tools. The Wizard has 25% more torque. Soon your TV will have over 500 channels. Almost enough to show you everything the Wizard can do. The Wizard, built by Black & Decker. I'm not everyone, I'm me. So when I decided to quit smoking, I did not choose that one-size-fits-all patch. I chose Nicorette gum. Nicorette has this flexible dosing schedule that helped me control my cravings. It let me use the strength I needed, the amount I needed when I needed it. Nicorette was personal. It fit me. You know, me the non-smoker. Me. Nicorette gum helps you fight your cravings, your habit, your way. You can do it. Nicorette can help. My dad's just moved in with us. He's quite a character. Very disciplined, very organized. And that's going to be difficult with two very active little boys. I know his appearance is very important to him. He keeps those shirts of his spotless. I don't want them to end up dingy when they get thrown in the wash with the kids' dirty stuff. Liquid Tide's new clean rinse formula. It helps prevent dirt in the wash water from redepositing on clothes, so everything comes out whiter than with regular detergents. I think they're going to learn a lot from each other. The new Slumber Time Soother with remote control. The first soother you can activate out of baby's sight. With the Slumber Time Soother, you can help him to sleep without waking him up. Works like a dream. I won't play truth or dare with my color. I shampoo with Color Vive by L'Oreal. Color Vive is formulated with a UV filter to protect and revitalize every strand. That's why my color stays truer, longer, my hair healthier. With Color Vive by L'Oreal. These days, everyone's trying to catch Nintendo's Pokemon. So catch a Pokemon beanbag for only $4.99 with any KFC meal. Catch all four. Better hurry up. I'm starting my own collection. Let's eat. Ooh, cafe classics from Ling Cuisine. And I am Carlo, your weight person tonight. Chicken piccata. In herb lemon butter. Oh, fabulous. Mm -hmm. You're not expecting a tip, are you? Yeah, 30, 40%. Stover's Ling Cuisine. It's not just lean, it's cuisine. I'm Merv Griffin, and this is an intimate portrait of Vanna White. From Phoenix, Arizona, it's Family Week on Wheel of Fortune. Vanna's job on Wheel of Fortune takes her on the road and away from home several times a year. All around the country, the fans come out in droves for a glimpse of their favorite game show hostess. And when they meet her, they're not disappointed. And even if they don't meet her one-on-one -on -one personally, just being in the audience when she comes on stage, I think they feel like they're seeing someone, meeting someone, greeting someone that they've known and, and loved for a long, long time. Okay. In spite of the demands of her job and other business obligations, Vanna's first love and commitment is to her family. I think one of the lovely things about Van is that she handles so much in her life, her career, her home, her children, all very busy things. It takes a lot of her time, but she does it with a great ease. She does it with serenity. She not, never seems to be overwrought. You know, she waited so long to get married and to have children, and I just think she's become a, a, just a deeper, more complete person since she's been married and met a mother. You know, she's just real at ease with herself. I think she's really happy with herself right now. I really do. I think she's probably happier than she's ever been. One T, yeah. With a job on one of television's most popular game shows, a couple of side businesses, her crocheting and a husband, two children, Vanna just didn't have enough to do, so she decided to try the music field. Do. You never seem to want my romancing. The only time you hold me is when we're dancing. The first time she sang in public was to yours truly, and I have to admit, I was amazed. Vanna took singing lessons and then recorded an album of Christmas songs. I just have fun with it. Um, I'd like to continue on in that and maybe, maybe pursue it just because I find it to be fun. Uh, 
And it's, I think, when, when a singer makes people happy. And that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to make people happy. Vanna kept in touch with her biological father, Mike Rosich, who was an artist until his death in 1987. He did live to see his daughter blossom into a major success. He told me how proud he was, but he never asked me for anything or bothered me or it was just like, I'm so proud of, of my daughter. I'm glad she's, she's done well. He had a heart of gold. He was a very good man. Vanna also donates a lot of her time and money to the American Cancer Society, in part because both of her natural parents died of the disease. It's, it's very difficult, for example, to go to the children's hospital and, and try to put a smile on the children's faces when you know they're terminally ill. But, but that's what it's all about. If you can give them a good feeling, give somebody a good feeling, it makes it all worth it. It's so great to be back in San Francisco. It is. It's been too long. Let's spend two weeks here. What do you say? I'd love it. For a woman who doesn't speak more than 30 seconds on television each night, everyone feels that they know who Vanna White is. And even though we maybe have 30 seconds, maybe a minute if we're lucky at the end of a show, if you add that up over 16 years, uh, we blabbed a lot about fairly insignificant things about her cats and her tomatoes and you know we mostly talk about her uh, which we like doing and because she's a little more open I think with her personal life and and people like hearing about her because they don't get to hear about her during the body of the show uh, so if you you know if you add those minutes up over over all the years uh, they've learned a lot about Vanna <laughs> Vanna has been in the public eye on Wheel of Fortune for most of her adult life but there are still some things she prefers to keep private. I know that there have been a couple of cases where there have been people in need of a personal visit from Vanna, people that maybe were not well, that she did. Oh, she'll kill me for saying. She did this entirely on her own with absolutely no fanfare, no publicity. But I know for a fact that she made a couple of completely unsolicited and non-publicized visits because that's the kind of person she is. She's very smart, very, very smart. And I think that's something that's kind of, you know, maybe overlooked. Hey, this. Bye-bye. See which of your favorite celebrities are coming up. An intimate portrait. Monday, hear how Olivia Newton-John has dealt with breast cancer. And then on Tuesday, meet talk show host Jenny Jones. And on Wednesday, it's Vanna White. Intimate portrait only on Lifetime. Television for women. A Lifetime intimate portrait. Her natural talent propelled her to stardom. And along the way, she's faced devastating tragedy. But the love and loss have fueled her passion to sing. In her own words, intimate portrait, Reba McIntyre. Next Saturday night at 10 on Lifetime. Thank you.